Biosimilars actually are carefully regulated by uh, international regulatory agencies. They generally have agreed with each other. Even the World Health Organization has weighed in on what a biosimilar is and what needs to be done in order to say that a biosimilar meets the criteria for approval. And of course the FDA and EMA have as well. Uh, so a biosimilar has to be uh, similar to the agent based on analytic tests and based on uh, additional PK and PD markers. It can't show immunogenicity that's different from the originator product. And then it has to have clinical similarity in a specific setting that you've chosen. So you choose a setting where the originator product is highly effective and very it's a very sensitive indication and in the case of trastuzumab combined with chemotherapy uh, and then you have to show similar endpoints with a short-term endpoint. So generally what that means based on the regulatory guidance is response. And there is no requirement on the part of the regulatory agencies to look at additional endpoints other than response. But some of these trials have also looked at either event-free or progression-free survival, depending on whether it's early or late stage disease that's being evaluated. And for me, and I think for most clinicians, getting that as a secondary endpoint gives you more confidence that this agent really does fit the definition of a biosimilar. No clinically meaningful differences between the originator product and the biosimilar.